Cool perfect. Nice one, guys. Nice to see you all. By the way, today it's October 20, and this is going to be quite an unusual meeting. It's a very small one with small attempts, but we have a good few good people around us to see talking about what's been done so far in the SIG, trying to agree on what to do next. So, Tom, uh, later on to a little to summarize to you, I mean, to summarize what's going on in SIG. We unfortunately are missing today our friend Rick Valiquet is busy on other stuff. But we, we will stand in the recording of the meeting anyway. Okay. So you'd like me to share a couple of thoughts here? Yeah, if you, okay. if you wish to. Uh, uh, sure. So, so uh, Andrea, myself, Eric, Alicia, we've been having some conversations about how do we expand the Hyperledger supply chain and trade finance SIG beyond a webinar factory. <laughs> um, so we, we like doing webinars. They're valuable. It's great to hear the speakers and the stories. So is there a way or what is the way? And we think about this in terms of um, a broader audience participation or broader, broader SIG participation. Is there a way that we could add more value to corporate members of Hyperledger, as well as all the members of our SIG who may or may not be part of corporate members of Hyperledger, but um, may have an interest in supply chain, trade finance. How do we make help blockchain break out more strongly going forward? So that's at least I believe the genesis of the conversation we want to have today here. So Andrea and you know Ian and Purnoob, if you guys want to ask any questions, certainly you're more than welcome to ask questions what that what you think that means uh, here or anybody else that's on this. Or if you're listening to the recording and you want to hit one of us up uh, with questions uh, and we'll have the, we'll have the dialogue here, but at least we, we want to open this up and this will be an ongoing uh, item. I did talk with, I'll mention, I did talk with one corporate member uh, or one representative of a corporate member, I guess I should be more specific. Uh, earlier this week, and that person expressed some interest in in following through and seeing how we could add more value. And they're going to go back to their team and try to figure out where they are. I'll tell you that uh, one of the areas that they specifically mentioned was around uh, data compliance, onboarding, fraud detection, a lot of that kind of garbage in, garbage out kind of ideas were some of the areas where they were. And this is a, a retailer uh, out there. So I'll leave it at that right now. And Andre, I'll turn it back to you. Wonderful. Thanks, Tom, by the way. Uh, I'll bring my experience. Um, if some of you, uh, somebody did last year follow the TV of former Hyperledger Trade Fund SIG, uh, is aware of the fact that I, with other stakeholders within SIG, launched a project called Breaking Silas Being Silas. The project in my own mind is far from me over and dead and cold, by the way. So I also share your opinion, Tom, by the way. Uh, this is, this should at least in intention be far from being simple showcase the meetings and companies developing. It should be this central thought in the community of our pleasure in kickstarting projects. And I bring my own experience. Trade finance is a very hybrid nature. I've been telling this over and over again, but it's still it's worth being highlighting. It's a hybrid nature industry. You can call it industry, by the way. Uh, it crossed pathway with supply chain, which is the main reason why the two cities got merged. But it also crosses, especially nowadays, pathway with so many other topics that are under everybody's spotlight, namely climate change. So, you see, being part of an open source community by nature, this means sharing experiences. And uh, you see, creating our own experiences based on what's been done in the same community and elsewhere. And I'm referring to what uh, especially has been done by climate change and action scene recently. Uh, 
Connects to the Lira code and an open source base, creating projects. That's the real role of a special interest group. Fostering projects, fostering at least uh, experiences, gathering together, workshops. So the next step is trying to understand, and I'm asking also the attendance feeling in doing this, what can be done in your experience? to foster this kind of projects. Because being trade finance petition, a long-term one actually, unfortunately maybe, got me started thinking that we should go that way. And by the way, it's been recently posted a lot of stuff among the profile share of the community, uh, detailing on how supply chain trade finance is going and heading straight towards the topics, namely ESG and sustainability. So we more join forces without a seat and going for workshops. Hopefully, interest six, the better will be for the whole community. So I take as these let's shift massively, maybe end of the year, beginning on the next one, towards this picture. Let's go for more of workshops on a regular basis and maybe a little less in terms of meetings. They are useful, of course, because we have to understand what's going on in the market. But priority nowadays should be delivering and fostering projects. So my take on the current situation of the city is this one. It's a big hole, of course, because maybe of the past lacks in meaning that we have to fill in, and we haven't managed to do so so far. So I'll look back to you, Tom, and maybe if Alicia wants to have some thoughts into this and bring his own experience on other, on another say, which is also on my radar, of course, because trade finance, supply chain, they do have a strong, and climate change, and climate action, by the way, they do have a strong impact, social impact. So I'll leave it back to you. You have some thoughts and substance. Yeah, I, I guess, guess from my perspective, workshops is one option. Uh, th there's a hyperledger has a strong uh, desire to have more code bases out there. Uh, so getting more folks who have development backgrounds and are able to work together from a supply chain and trade finance background, right? And implement ideas and code. There can be a, a nice uh, merger of those types of ideas uh, with this. So, and, and I on a same, same call earlier this week, a uh, person from Hyperledger, David Boswell, so, you know, what have other things done? One is the code kind of idea that you mentioned, Andrea, with the, the climate uh, action and accounting group there. Uh, there's also the telecom SIG has done some work as, in, in creating solution briefs. So that'd be another thing. So white papers on specific topics out there. Uh, a lot of supply chain, I, I threw out the idea of, of, you know, should we be looking at standards or trying to create some sort of se semantic level standards as opposed to maybe uh, data standards. And at one level, GS1 is pretty powerful or pretty pr prevalent um, in a lot of supply chain. I mean, if you got a barcode, you, you can use GS1 <laughs> or vice versa, I guess, as the case may be. So, but there may be, there's probably lots of other places where GS1 isn't there. So that might be a place um, out there. Uh, I believe the area of reverse logistics is very uh, ripe for potential uh, blockchain applicability. And no one is really, I shouldn't say no one. Pr I don't think too many people are thinking about the whole problems of reverse logistics, which is certainly very important when you talk about circular economy types of concepts. So there might be something we could do there. So I throw those ideas out and maybe, you know, Ayan and Pranub, it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts. You know, you're here, you know, tap, tap your brain power and, you know, share, yeah, yeah. share your insights um, on this. And, you know, we can maybe I, use by, that. By, by the way, Pranuba Gaz is from India, so I know for sure. We, we had our last call with uh, our friend Lash. I was suspecting 
to show up to, they unfortunately couldn't make it. But I know that the more we progress in time, the more India as a community and as a whole, we see is casting light on the topic that you mentioned, circularity, sustainability, and sustainable development goals. So if Pranub is there and is willing to take the word, please do it and give us your, your insights into this. Hi, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Welcome, Pranub, by the way. Hi there. Uh, I'm sorry, I actually uh, uh, I'm just trying to get into and uh, learning everything from you guys, trying to follow you on LinkedIn. And I'm just new to all this, but uh, I'm getting a lot of knowledge from all, you, all of you people. And I thought that's going to be uh, me today learning from all of you and discussing about uh, hyperledgers. Uh, but uh, I'm, I guess I'm from India and uh, I'm move, moving to UK uh, in a couple of, couple of months. And I'm going for, uh, uh, you know, understanding more about trade and uh, trade finance. And that is what I'm interested in because, uh, and also about the uh, digitalization for trade. So uh, I'm just trying, I was here listening to everybody so that I can get the, uh, am I audible? Hello? Yeah. Yep. So I'm just trying to learn and grab everything from all, all of you guys there. So right now I'm just listening to, yeah. Okay. Pretty, what's your, uh, welcome. Uh, and congratulations. Yep. I, I hope I'm going to the UK. That's, that's a good deal. It's a big move. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there. What, what's your what's your background? What kind of skills? Have, I mean, we're all learning together. We all bring yeah. skills here. You know, what are, what are the skills yeah. that you have now that maybe mm -hmm. could contribute to some of this? Uh, what what we're trying to do here at an overall level? Okay. Oh well, uh, I'm a master's. I've done my master's in international business, and uh, I'm being a member of the ITC International Trade Center with the WTO and I've done about 21 certifications with them while even I was in the lockdown. That's how I got so much of knowledge about uh, trade and how trade finance work and how digitalization is going to be implemented. As in UK, we all know that it's just going to be uh, the in the parliament has just been uh, you know discussed and I don't know how it's going to be changing things. <laughs> and uh, also about the FTA's discussions with India and UK, it is going on very uh, you know, I don't know. I think we all know what happened in UK today. Uh, Ms. Tass is out in, of the office and I don't know how things are going to pan out in the future. But I think the uh, future looks great. I mean, in terms of if we talk about India, because, uh, you know, how we you know what's going on between Ukraine and Russia and then also their attention about China. So India has a very big uh, role to play in order to fill this gap of the uh, production and every, uh, manufacturing uh, units that are available over here and uh, also they, we are, as I follow the government uh, orders over here as well, there are a lot of FTAs that are being trying, to, especially UK at this point of time. We have already done five rounds of talks. And I think by the end of this month, there's going to be the final talks with the uh, UK government. And I hope uh, uh, that pans out well, because it's going to be amazing uh, if things go well. And uh, I am also a big follower of sustainability. So uh, as we all know that uh, plastic is being eradicated and... Uh, what I'm trying to do is that I'm trying to set up my own company. And that is the reason I'm traveling to UK. And uh, I have contacted people uh, from India, which are producing, uh, uh, you know, we have the single uh, plastic use is being eliminated by more or less every country, uh, which is connected with the United Nations. So uh, uh, what I have done is that, you know, in India, I live in the Himalayas, I love Himalayas. So uh, in India, uh, uh, in this region, there's sugarcane. A lot of sugarcane which has been produced and, and when we use the sugarcane the remaining is buggers so in order uh, uh, so to use that buggers we have made uh, you know plastic bags uh, uh, you know uh, hooks knives and uh, uh, you know uh, generally we, we use thermocol plates and all that so we have buggers plates so what we're trying to do is that we have it in abundance we trying to you know try to uh, you know export uh, to different countries so i have uh, set up a company in regards to that and uh, uh, that is what I am trying to plan out to do uh, because, you know, sustainability is something we all have to look into as that is the need of the hour. And uh, I think everybody have to co contribute. So this is the re uh, reason because I'm, I, as I told you, I've done my master's in international business. I want to connect that to sustainability because both things are very prominent and they're here to stay for a very long time. So uh, what I'm trying to do is because I'm uh, trying to focus on the QSRs, quick serving restaurants and uh, trying to make my uh, organization a little bit better and uh, bigger and uh, trying to also understand, obviously uh, I'm here because I want to learn about digitalization of trade and this is relatively new for everybody. 
but I have also completed my certification with the ITC from the blockchain for trade. I've done that last month. So that is how I got so much of interest in digitalization for trade because that is also a future and that had bound to happen, especially after we coming out of COVID. So, uh, you know, that is all uh, about me. Thank you. Thanks, Pranu, for uh, sharing there. So my takeaway is you have a uh, business background and trade background and yep. use cases around there would be something where you could add value and work together. With yes. Okay. Oh, well, okay. I guess one thing I didn't say is that I've been working in, uh, in my organization, which is for exports and governments, and I've just left my job. Uh, last month, we went to government exports. So I was the business manager of an organization. So I was doing that for last 10 years. Thank you. You got some big changes there, sir. Yeah. Yes, I, I'm you. changing myself. <laughs> changing that is all happened. I think that's the only positive that I can take out from COVID. <laughs> because I learned so much. I did so much certification. I learned, learned a lot. Yeah. So that is how it is. That's oh, good. Well done. Yeah. Accomplished quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not sure sure that the whole change in the government of the UK is going to change a whole heck of a lot. I mean, yep. they'll still need to export, they'll still need to import, they'll still need to do yes. things there, yeah. you know. Some but I, I believe, uh, uh, but I believe, you know, after Brexit, you know, every other country have an equal playing ground now, you know, uh, because earlier it was a free trade, uh, you know, going on between the European Union and now everybody have a like if I talk about India, we have an equal grounds, uh, you know, as the, it's going to be same as uh, the European Union, even the workforce and the services that are going to be provided. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Well, sounds like you got a great background and you can help us figure out wh where we, sh where we should go with this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, I would ask everybody's tried to learn from and take the first step. So I have, I have read a couple of articles about hyperledgers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just trying to grab as much as information. I'm yeah. learning a lot these days. So I'm trying to grab as much information from, obviously from you, uh, uh, esteemed people who have been in this organization for years now, but just trying to grab as much as knowledge I can. Yeah. Okay. Good. Oh, Good. Yeah. Ayan, you want to share? Uh... That's, That's great it. to know, by the That's... way, Pranu. That's the thing for you. That's... Pardon, Andrea? Yes, go ahead, Ahan. All right, thank you. Thank you, Andrea. And the, I have just a, one or two things indeed. I'm from, I'm joining from the Istanbul, Turkey, and the, mm -hmm. I'm trying to support to the reunion of the Hyperledger Istanbul group globally mm -hmm. in Turkey. That is the, one of the reasons why I have joined today. And the, I'm so much pleased to a big fan and a big follower of the trade finance and the supply chain SA, SIG. And the, that's that's really, I'm much more pleased to follow up to all the webinars, all the courses which you have been sharing uh, through the webinars. To be honest, I must say that I have learned too many things. Too many yeah. things? <laughs> too many things. <laughs> Good, good, good. Okay, that's something I don't usually hear. Uh, that that's really good. That that that's the reason why I love so much the uh, hyperledger. That that's the reason. One thing is missing. I did not learn the fabrics. I, I I'm not promoting myself to learn the fabrics to quote to the uh, within the. I'm not a developer. I'm coming. Oh, yes. I'm, I, I'm 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 coming from the business side. And I have the more than the 30 years of banking experience, a total based on the trade finance and cross-border payments. And that's I have the one or two things. When I when I look at the all the histories of the uh, hyperledger and our today's world, where it's, it's going to do, uh, and where it's going to be. And the, I have one things in my hand that uh, I have noted one of the posts of Andrea did today. Touching to the globally exporters and the importers. That is the one of the one of one of one of one of the big idea which I have got from the uh, Andrea. Touching the exporters and the importers. That is the that 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 is the main stakeholders of the trade finance and the supply chain. One hand one has the goods, one has the money. 
Hmm. And how we would make it to combine the transaction between them. It might be this seems to be easy, but it's never to be easy. That 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 is the that is the reason why I'm here today and joining you today. Let's try to touch to the real customers. I don't know how would it be possible, but the Chamber of Commerce or the any other any other association regarding to the logistic providers we will we should use all of those sources to give them the idea of the what the digitalization is going to help them in the future days let's find out the sources let's find out the what what we will do indeed uh buy rent the seller logistic insurance or whatever it is and the sustainability a a asg things like that all all acceptable but at the end one buyer and one seller let's reach them let's find a way to reach them and to try to tell them that what the digitalization is from the perspective of the uh, from the perspective of their real life that that that's that's quite crucial from my perspective because when i look at the when i touch to the when i talk to the every of my ex client ex customer whether it's exporter whether it's importer they are they are not ready to accept the, what the digitalization is uh from from their real life let's give let's give them the, a kind of the idea which would be helpful to 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 make to take the higher steps in the business life mm-hmm. and that that that's the one that's the one of the, my reason uh all i can tell you that one other point is that when i look at the our today's world apac reason is quite i'm sorry i missed i missed that word apac 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 okay as a pacific as a pacific reason Asia Pacific region is quite important and is going to be the more and more important. Let's try to reach the uh, real contacts from that side mm-hmm. and they who try to learn the, their approach, their exist position, how we would get to the idea from that world, because that world is really getting the much more importance in in today and for the tomorrow and the when i think of the before the ukrainian war after the ukrainian war it doesn't matter it does always carries the important importancy and the i'm trying to make this some kind of the uh, bridges taking the importance of the chinese role that we should keep it in your mind that i'm sure that linux foundation would be the help us to get to to bring us the some kind of the contacts to make the further uh further analysis where the trade finance is where is the supply chain is and where this will be in the coming days and the what i can tell you that uh i love the hyperledger and the i i'm sure that i will going to contact with you in the coming days for your help regarding the reunion of the hyperledger istanbul um mm-hmm. thank you guys thank you mm-hmm. uh, uh lady uh, for <laughs> listening to me <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> that's okay that's okay your english is much better than my turkish so <laughs> oh, what, by the way alicia what i have mentioned is totally right and this is uh can you can you hear me by the way i can i'm i'm just yeah yeah can you hear me Yes. Yes, yes. Well, wonderful. Sorry. So what I am mentioned is totally correct and I share his view. Uh first, we should be going for more meetings and this is going to be maybe mine and I hands task to do the things that we did last summer with David Menel. So sticking to international organization, the first thing is ICC, RCC UK, Narantis to spread the verb of digitization and digitalization because uh, in trade and supply chain my view blockchain 
has to go for team sport by way of cooperating with other technologies in general. So you talk about digitalization rather than blockchain deployment. And second thing is to stick to the epic region and what's going on. We, we, we are into this together, by the way, Alicia, because of the next forthcoming meetings. Uh, so we should be committed in driving more attendance from that specific area and we should be thinking on how to do this. It's total priority in my view. And by the way, I'm in chat with Edmund Tor of the GSBN. Uh, I will try again to restart talking to him. Should be available to deliver some more content and share with us some updates on the side. That will allow us to cast the light of what's going on in China and the whole back region. But yet again, on the side of webinars and meetings, we should do more in that space. Um, I think one thing to keep in mind is, you know, as we're growing and as we're becoming more focused, you know, we, yeah. we're already planning on having a Latin America focused. Okay. Yes, too. And we're going to discuss this, by the way, next November 17, when Alfonso will, will join right. us. Right. So Alfonso will, will be will be coming and speaking soon. But that's going to be so, global, by the way, because I'm pretty sure that, for instance, GSBN is pretty interested in Latin America because of what's going on in Peru with digitalization, digitalization okay. and the mining industry. So this is going to be, let's say, cross-border stuff. Right. Well, as we're looking at this, we might want to think about, you know, each quarter looking at a different region of the world or every every half year so that over time we, we're looking at all all the different regions so if we start by looking at latin america maybe doing a next, and let's think about what what that means i Not would just, do it on a quarterly basis yeah uh, we, need, we need to we need to be focused about it because otherwise it's going to be hard to to really fulfill aims if if we don't know what our what our goals are within that. Just saying we wanna we wanna connect with APAC. What specifically are we looking for in APAC? And I hundred percent agree with you, Alicia. Yeah. Absolutely, totally agree. So if um, we're if Q one is focused on Latin America for next year, do we want to have it be a quarterly change of Let's uh, do quarterly. Let's do quarterly. Half year. Let's do quarterly. We should Let's be focusing. Quarterly. See what's so, going on in Africa through our friend Ida Wolf of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's why we should explore what's going on in South Africa. We well, do we want to do Africa first or Sub Saharan Africa first, or do we want to do APAC first after yeah. Latin America? I would go for first. I would, well, after Latin America, I would focus in Africa, to be honest. South Africa. Okay. Let's cast light on what's going on. I'll tell you more. Africa is going to be linked to what's going on in the African region through China. So if we there's there's a lot going there, on in Africa and different things, and it's going to give us the hook to explore what's going on in the African region. We we massively focus in the African region the, the last two years. You know that most of the attendance they came they used to come from there. We've had people talking from India. We have people talking from Singapore from different areas. And I agree with Ihan. We should cast a light constantly into what's going on in Africa region. Singapore is over there and it's gonna become it has already become the real hub in digitalization in connection right. with the UK. This is part of why I had invited Bridie from 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 Gior oh, to come speak to us because she is in Singapore. And you know you know what I think, Alicia. Let's keep the door open for Bridie. Let's That's go certainly. maybe for a very special meeting. If the rest of the tents cannot join, we could go first. You know, I live in Italy, so I'm six hours back in time compared to Brady. It's going to be easier for me, maybe for you and I as well, to join the call and hear from Brady if the rest of the tents. Then we live cast the meetings as usual to, 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 to let people uh, give their own insights. Yeah. Hey, guys, I... I, I... I hear the, the geographical focus, mm -hmm. and I guess my feeling is, is that we might be better off having the focus on something that is going to provide benefit in supply chain or trade finance, a la, you know, what's the use case? 
that might be valuable for importing and exporting. As Ian was saying, and for new, actually, both of them were talking about. You could do both, export, in my right? opinion, Tom, to be honest. You could do both. I agree with you. Use cases are a winning game. Absolutely. If we do both at the same time, though, we're, I think we're diluting our focus. I think we all have a limited amount of time and energy that we can put into this. So we need to be mindful about how we are directing our res the, re the resources we have. I, I, I do like what, to what Tom is saying about, you know, let's rather than do geographic, because a, a lot of things are global. So it might be a company in Asia, but they're involved in global supply chains. If I look at what's yes. going on in Indonesia or Singapore, there's a lot of import and export from all around the world. Absolutely so, agree with you, Alicia. Okay. And you touched a few focal points, Indonesia, that area. I know a few people around that would know, by the way, Leanne Camp. She's from Australia. She's doing stuff in the area. So that could be an idea to have a step in and deliver. So uh, we should do both things in parallel. We should bring in use cases yeah. from specific areas to see what's going on in parallel. Andrea, Leon Kemp's company, um, ever, they, they do a lot in um, the UK as well. They've, done a, they've worked with Hong Kong. Yeah. They've done work all over. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and I may be jumping ahead here, you know, I'm thinking import export, you know, what, what area of import export, where, where could we, where could we do something? You know, what, what would be some areas that would provide value? Is it in the paperwork area? I mean, because, mm -hmm. you know, you, everyone's mentioned digitalization and yep, that's key. And to some degree, you got to have the data, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, there, am I getting the data from some automated sensors that I'm able to use? Or are we gonna have to establish some sort of, I hate to say standard, or, hey, if you wanna do this blockchain thing, you can't have some person sitting in the factory or on the farm, oh, well, hey, that cow looks healthy, check, you know? And then it goes on the blockchain <laughs> type of thing <laughs> there. Uh, or do you have to have some sort of auditing where you know you have you have veterinary uh, folks that are going out there and every every animal that goes through, yeah, they're all healthy. We've we've certified it. You know, that's actually that's a really in practice. It's a really complicated use case. <laughs> well, exactly. I mean, I'm, um, I'm you, throwing you know out that this is one. I, I'm not going to start talking about it because once I start, you're not going to shut me up. But <laughs> anything around agriculture like that, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces, which is why designing designing like documenting your your supply chain and figuring out what data needs to be collected, who that data has to come from, how we make sure it's the correct data, how we make sure that there's no data fraud, how to make sure that the data we have actually applies to um, the product where the, to the to the physical product we think. I mean, yesterday I, I was interviewed by a researcher and I was talking about a company that I mentored a couple of years ago in a blockchain accelerator. And they were a biotech company participating in a blockchain accelerator because they were creating um, DNA tags. They were putting data inside of DNA that would allow recipients of a product, whether it be food, whether it be pharma, whether it be textiles, to then do a swab of, of the product and confirm, did it have the right digital tag to say that it really did go along yeah. with this blockchain record? And, and, um, and I'm glad you're saying those kind of things. And you know, I, 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 it was somewhat of a leading question, right? <laughs> I'm throwing out ideas here to get us all thinking. And, and I, but I, I believe where we can add value is, yes, there's 50 million questions about what doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the cow's example or the biomarkers or whatever. Can we maybe establish in one small domain, here's what can work. Here's where you can start mm -hmm. if you're an importer exporter. You know, Pranub, you're moving to the UK, right? You're gonna be 
importing sugarcane kind of stuff. How are you going to prove that, right? It was harvested sustainably, blah, blah, blah. You know, it didn't have any child labor doing anything, all those good things, right? And, you know, that's always the promise of blockchain. You know, if you're importing stuff, I am, then some the provenance is important, but it's more a matter of then what can you do with that provenance, right? Hey, I can give you lower rates because the stuff is established well. So, so it's it's where where would we start? Where could we add value mm-hmm. in this area as a small, you know, as a volunteer group? We don't have a thousand people. Nobody is, you know, we're not anybody's manager. To your point, Alicia, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, we can't say. Pranub, you need to do this. And if you don't have it done by next Monday, you know, we're not going to do that, right? No. We're all, we need to find an area, some way that is valuable in this in this supply chain trade finance space where we can make a difference. And one thing- There's 50 million places yeah. we can start. We I mean, need- one, one topic we could focus on for several for several weeks or months or a quarter if we want to is like blockchain and- different technologies, blockchain and AI, blockchain and IoT, blockchain and, because it's not about blockchain by itself. It's about the intersection, the intersection, just yeah. like to make sure that there's no, like what is the environmental impact or the labor impact? You're getting these third party certifications. So it's the combination of tools. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm going back to something I Anne said about, uh, you know, how, how do I how do I get customers that aren't ready to digitize? They need a push, <laughs> right? Was the words, and I think what you're looking for, Anne, is what is that push? Yeah, I mean out there, um, and, and it's really what we're talking about is what is that push, and maybe does blockchain and whatever could be a white paper. And by the way. I, I I love time boxing things. So uh, Alicia, you, you 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 warmed my heart when you said you know it's weeks or months. You know yeah. this shouldn't turn into a year long type of thing at least initially. <laughs> Otherwise, we'll yeah. we'll never get it done. Yeah. I mean, involved in a a standards group, some of you know around blockchain governance at IEEE, and they've been talking about it for three years. And you know, in the last year. Finally, I, I got involved about a year and a half ago, and finally we're going to have something out here after it. And uh, things can things can expand to fit the amount of time that they're allocated. And if you don't have a specific time, they're going to yeah they're going yeah. to take it over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, Andre, I don't know what your thoughts are um, here, Pranub or Ian, and, and you know, it might be we're, we're going to have more people weigh in. I mean, we want to get more corporate members here. You know, Pranup, think about your company and what you need to do or your old company. And Ian, sounds like you're in consulting, Ian. Is that right? Yes, indeed. Okay, yes. gotcha. So your clients, right? Hey, what would they need in order to get pushed here? I think I had it myself, Ken, as since we're so strictly connecting and involved in a few things together. We should handle these things. One thing that I noticed is what is missing nowadays from blockchain in general and DLT is, is the missing involvement of companies. We've been talking a lot about banks, <laughs> large banks, institutions, and stuff like this. But we should raise the question and try to capture the attentions by companies all around what doing export and import, of course. So this could be handled by me and I have and produce if, if, if it wants to join. I mean, all the back to and see how you said, see the inception between blockchain IOTs and all the topics related to it. Oh, uh, can I come in here? Yep. Sure, Blue. You, you can give us your insights and opinion more than that. Right. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, I've been following the ICC uh, for a couple of, couple of days because we are having the uh, uh, you know, uh, pros- prosperity week. It's been started on 17th and it was till 28th. I also attended the modernization of world trade. That was yesterday. And I think it was wonderful. And they talked about a lot of points uh, like the uh, LEIs. I don't know if uh, I also learned about it day before yesterday because everything is coming, coming new every day. 
so uh, i think that's a wonderful way where you can you know for the security of everybody uh, you can actually uh, get in the leis uh, that is the legal entity uh, uh, identifiers i don't know if everybody is uh, aware about it uh, but they have launched they have launched a, a, a platform where you can register that okay this person is genuine you know, there might be certain laws, which are, I think, the MLETR, Modern Law of Electronic Transferable Records, which will be going to the governments and everything. And then, obviously, blockchain could be uh, run very well. But I, I also asked a question uh, to them, which was, like, digitalization for trade is practically going on for two decades now. I think that is what I learned, that it's been proposed and it's been, you know, it's, it is said that it will be delivered. But I, I honestly think whatever... Uh, knowledge I gained from it was that unless and until all the governments come together because it's a, it have to be it can't be one like Singapore e got the EBL electronic bill of lading uh, and I think they are polishing it and also Australia now and China has helped them in in the trades they are going to be taking place between those three countries okay. but they actually took one step because you know it's a very big thing you know EBLs LCs in good terms the way you want to do the business putting everything on blockchain, it's a very complex process. So, but they have given their start and also given a start with the EBL, which is the most important document. So uh, they are doing it. Now UAE is also there. It's been implemented in the UK, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Done how... a fair amount on this too. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering, you know, because I only believe that if everyone comes in together and I asked this question in the meeting. So what they told me was we're going to be raising this question in the G7. Once the G7 comes in, they're going to be focusing it to G20. You know, if everybody agrees, because if the G7 uh, agrees to it, then I think it's going to be, uh, you know, adapted by other people as well. Once the developed countries and then the developing countries, I think it's an amalgamation that everybody gets together. Because if somebody have to uh, export from India or China and then export it to Italy and all the G7 countries, if the, all the countries have to be a part of it. Yeah. Hello. By the way, I found out that we are already connected on LinkedIn. I think what we can do yeah, is yeah. follow up early next week. If you're available, since you're in the UK, so we're almost in the same timeline, we should have yeah. a brief three of us and agree on what to do in this specific context to bring in yeah. speakers' attendance to detail what's going on in this specific field yeah. and stick to the epic region you see. And having people talking with us uh, and yeah. delivering insights to be useful. And I will drop you a message, by the way, later today, next week, tomorrow morning, to agree or create a common chat where I hand myself and you can interact and agree on what to do next. Sure. Well, I've been following Ayan and you on LinkedIn rigorously and I've gotten so much of knowledge from all the things that you share. I read every mm -hmm. and every, uh, uh, you know, uh, post that you make. Well, thank you. I'm delighted. You see, this is purpose, main purpose why I share so much, by the way. I stick into uh, the, the mailing list. I will restart, you see, the week in charts where I also share on the mailing list, by the way, all the articles being shared on LinkedIn. And elsewhere, yes. to summarize and to gather knowledge with the participants. Yes. But anyway, next week, we'll love to catch up with you and I have, by the way, what do you feel for? So we can see it once again in the round table and go to action and we are what to do next. That would be wonderful. So we're kind of at the top of the hour almost. How do we tie this in a pretty bow for right now? <laughs> I mean, clearly there's a lot more discussion here. Absolutely. Uh, I think, um, you know, individuals so as well as, um, you know, us as a group. And we, we, we want and need more interested parties to make it. You know, Ian, I give you credit for reestablishing the Hyperledger uh, instant rule thing. If, you know, if we can talk, about, if we can help you do that by talking about, you know, supply chain or trade finance, you know, sure. Well, we're happy to do that uh, type of thing. Um, for purposes of this conversation, what I've taken away is uh, we, we, we still need to further talk about what use cases or ideas and what form that work would take. You know, whether it's a, uh, a white paper, whether it's some sort of 
establish a standard, whether it's some sort of extension to a trade lens, as you mentioned earlier, Andrea, um, here. I mean, it, all of those are potential ways that we could go. Let's, 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 take, the, let's take the logistic providers into the game. The, the what providers? Logistics, logistics providers. providers. Oh, logistics, yeah, yeah. Well, into the game, into the game. All the logistic providers into the and, game. And trade lens, I guess, is one of the most important, last, maybe the most important yeah. in the game. It's going to be and, a GSP, it, man. It's hard to do that. There was a group here in the United States called uh, Blockchain and Transport Alliance. BIDA was the acronym. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I say there was a group. There's still a website, I believe, last time I checked. But... They they really tried to establish some standards in the logistics space, and it was and it was worldwide, although it was mostly focused in the United States, and it died. <laughs> I mean, and it had a lot of money behind it and a lot of juice behind it from industry, and it didn't happen. Um, and we had their head on uh, the hyperledger, you know, this this group. We we had their head on to talk about what standards they were trying to establish. So, you know, we, we need, I believe, and Pranub, you were kind of mentioning, hey, you know, G7, G, and getting all these intergovernmental kind of a groups there. there. There definitely needs to be a push from an industry perspective. And I, I'm right now, I'm more of a believer, and this is Tom's opinion, as opposed to fact, I'm more a believer in trying to create kind of minimal viable ecosystems and have things happen uh, because a lot of top-down stuff on blockchain hasn't quite worked. You know, a lot of the IBM stuff, right? We trade, we dot trade, bankrupt. You know, didn't happen uh, there. I, you know, Trade Lens has been pretty quiet, so I don't know where that is. Uh, Food Trust, which is another IBM type of thing. You know, Alicia, you may have more insight, but I'm not hearing it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, so in, in the whole consensus, you know, lookalike crowd <laughs> on Ethereum, it's not like I'm hearing much about them either okay. out there. So I believe there's a, a, there's kind of a bubbling up from a minimal viable ecosystems that needs to happen. And, you know, part of what we can do is maybe create some sort of minimal viable ecosystems of logistics and finance and whatever. Mm -hmm. Might be a big dream, but if we can find one or two, you know, here's some logistics provider, here's a two or three logistics provider, here's a couple of retailers, right? Here, here's some three PLs out there. Here, here's here's some producers or manufacturers or something that may want to try to do something around a very specific use case. Maybe mm -hmm. we got some. So, I mean, one thing we can do just to have our little um, targeted topic weeks or months or uh, periods um, is to have several companies ar around logistics speaking during a certain quarter, a certain amount of time and have that planned ahead of time so they all know who is participating when, who is speaking when, then they can all come in and listen to to the others and this will start to foment more discussion and then we can also um write up we can do write-ups of each of those presentations and put that on, on the hyperledger blog yeah so that generates content as well and have that that that's a nice double like it, it's it's um you know, we're hitting multiple targets at the same time, not just creating content, but we're opening conversation within industry, adding value that way, as well as documenting it. Because especially when we talk about startups and companies like that, um, they often don't have a lot of resources for documenting everything. And one challenge I know with some of the startups that I talk to is, even though they do have the resources, they need permission from the clients they worked with before they can talk about anything. So if they're able to come in and talk about something, but they they just don't have the the manpower internally to write it up, if they're talking about it, we can just yeah. you know tra basically transcribe and do a quick write up of what they presented, and that's yeah. giving them value too. Yeah. Okay. I like. 
you know, I like that as a, as a possibility here. Uh, yeah. Eric and I had talked a little back before, um, and Ayan and Eric is another one of the co-chairs here. Uh, we had talked, Hey, do we have like office hours? Bring, bring your, bring your problem and, you know, hear what, bring your problem for 15 minutes and then let, let people give you input on that. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly it's a little bit of free consulting, but if we do it under the guise of hyperledger, yeah, here's how you may or may not solve that. Right. That could be something of value or, you know, br bring a problem. I mean, ideally the broader basis, my hope is that we can get some of the corporate members to establish, hey, here's the things that are important to us. Mm -hmm. And then we can go and work on that. Right. Talking about the consulting, that, that also raises a question in my mind. There are so many different hyperledger iterations. And a, a non a non developer, I don't know those iterations well. I don't know the benefits or challenges of each of them. And that's something we might want someone who is able to speak to that involved in that type of consulting because companies yeah. asking questions yeah. will rightly have questions about, yeah. about those. Yeah. It's not just Hyperledger, but is a Hyperledger Besu or one of the others. Right. I mean, my, my, th th this is Tom, Tom's opinion uh -huh. is that things have, from a platform perspective, things have coalesced seemingly around fabric uh -huh. and, uh, Firefly is a way to implement that more easily. Um, and so Kaleido, if you guys are familiar with Kaleido at all, mm -hmm. is, a, really is a product mm -hmm. out there that helps you set up all the nodes and who's members of it and all, all the GORP that needs to happen. They make it a lot easier to do that kind of stuff. Um, so, okay, very valuable IT kind of GORP, but if it makes it a lot easier, cool. But I mean, what we're talking about is, you know, why does logistics provider one want to talk with, you know, retailer two and manufacturer three and all the other parties that are involved in any sort of transaction? That, that's where our challenge, I believe, is, especially mm -hmm. as a supply chain and trade finance. That's definitely uh, there. Yes, I think we are running on top of an hour and need yeah. to rush a little on the private side. Yeah. So and what can we do next? Today is the GS1 US Supply Chain Visibility Conference sure. starting in three minutes. So that's where <laughs> I'll be running. I, I had put it in the agenda just as a event of interest. So um, if any of the rest of you want to yeah. take a look at what's going on there, because that's usually a good one. I, I Yeah. I, I didn't sign up for it, Alicia, so I'll be interested. Maybe if I could get a debrief. <laughs> sure, glad to. Uh, on it. Especially with our friend Kevin Otto no longer there. Yeah. So let's, let's give our self appointment in two weeks' time when we're going to hear from a company called Envoy on interoperability, by the way, and cross-chain developing in trade finance and environmental social governance, ESG. So doing great stuff, the good friend of mine uh, just had a nice call today with them to, to get ready. So stay tuned, by the way, because we're going to hear from them. They're on the Hyperledger, they're working on also our three quarter, another chance dealing with interesting project. So that could be another great starting point into our researches. See you in two weeks' time, by the way. Enjoy your conference, Alicia. That was nice talking to you. <laughs> Talking to you, Ihan. By the way, Pranub, Ihan, going to create a group, common group on LinkedIn so we can start chatting and thinking of what we can do next. Ihan and myself, we are connecting and talk every day, so it's going to be easier. Beautiful. See you soon, guys, by the way. Thanks for joining today. Thanks it was all. great talking. Bye, Bye. Enjoy. Bye, everybody. Bye. -bye.